name's Eric. And I'm an artist. And I'm a painter. Tattoo artist, designer, illustrator. And we were at a young age. I was compelled and encouraged to um, <laughs> follow creative pursuits and always try to achieve my creative dreams. And I did. But as I grew up, I realized that the ideas in my head and the things that I wanted to do tended to be so much larger and grander than my physical ability would allow me to achieve. So about January of this year, I decided to form a collective. Now, it's not like a new approach. It's not something vital to any community whatsoever, but it's fun. And it gives you the opportunity to create some art with people you know, that you trust, and that you can work with. So, this is Sean, this is Sarah. And together, we, we started working out some ideas about stuff that we thought was different, things that we enjoyed, that we thought people might want to see. And, of course, we wanted to do art shows. We wanted to create new art, but most importantly, we wanted our art to have purpose. But we didn't want to create art that changed our own voice. We wanted to be able to show people our art, sell it, and give some money to the people who made those pursuits their purpose. So although this is starting to sound like a pretty cool idea, um, one thing artists inherently are are lofty dreamers and completely disorganized people. So we had a cool name called Wolf Sheep, but we did not have any shell to present to the public. And the one thing that makes you a professional entity, one thing that makes you a foundation to people is branding and identity. And that's when we met our friends at Media One and I met a guy named Graham. Hi, I'm Graham. So what I do is visual identity and branding. Um, how many people know the difference between branding and visual identity? Show of hands? Pretty good. So branding is what you see here. Um, I've got three people up here who are all fantastic artists. Uh, they are the Wolf Sheep brand. They are what creates Wolf Sheep. They are what makes it tick. What I did was create an identity for us, something to make us look professional, which is tough. Um, artists, by their nature, like Eric said, it's tough to make something like this look really polished. So where I came in was Eric and I sat down and we started chatting about how we could create a visual identity for something like Wolf Sheep. And the big part about it was, was finding something simple enough to let the art speak. Um, everybody here has been to an art gallery, I'm sure. Art galleries always have the same branding. Typeface, simple, clean, art does the talking. Um, so that's where we started. So once we have branding and identity and foundation in place, we needed a way to be able to communicate the fact that if we wanted things to be for purpose, we needed the people involved. Um, we met a, a guy named Adam. Um, this guy was incredibly driven to do just that job. Mm -hmm. I'm driven. <laughs> so yeah, the, uh, the Wolf Sheep guys brought me in to, to basically plan our first show, to throw a party, to, uh, to get people out to, to see what it is that we do. Um, shortly after they brought me in, I realized it was quickly becoming a we situation. We, we at Wolf Sheep, you know, we, we are a collective. And uh, so we started planning, started planning the show, and we're trying to think of the theme for the show. And our artists work a lot on collaboration. They work together on paintings. The one that uh, you're going to see when we finish up here is one of the, is an example of that. And we thought we'd take the idea of, of a collaborative painting and apply it to an entire event. We wanted to create a show that had many different contributors that all had a say in the final product of it and what it actually looked like at the end. Uh, so we had the concept, and then we went down to planning. I'll get back to that. Um, when we had the concept and we had an idea for a show, we wanted people to come to the show. and. If people are going to come to the show, we need to communicate with people to come to the show. The way that we go about that, uh, everyone uses uh, everyone uses social media. It's just part of our part of our nature now. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, all that. Uh, so we bring some people involved. They're afraid of the stage. Um, we get people to to handle that for us, to work on it all the time. Because I mean, social media isn't it's not a new thing. It's not cutting edge anymore. But the way that you use it is kind of what helps people learn about, about what you're doing and feel more a part of what you're doing. If, uh, 
if you're communicating all the time, if you're updating them on where you're going, what you're doing, what your interests are, um, what sort of things you know, inspire you, people see that all the time and they start to get a better idea of who you are and they feel a little more comfortable with it. Uh, the other way aside from social media we wanted to let people know was uh, literally on the, on the streets in our physical community. So we talk, to, uh, we talk to our friends that run a postering company. We start getting handbills printed up. We start getting posters on the poles around downtown so that people see what's going on. They see the, the, the font that we specifically chose. They see the name that we specifically chose to communicate to them. So they get a better, stronger sense of, of who we are and, and what we're trying to communicate to them. Handbills are a great thing because people take them home. They put them in their fridge. Suddenly you are in someone's home. They start to feel like you're more a part of their world and we're a part of their world. Uh, so once we got the communication down, again, we went back to the planning. Uh, the way to get people involved in a show to feel like they're really, really a part of it is, uh, is to, like I said, offer them something towards the finished product. The way that we did that was the, the property that we got at the atrium building, we talked to the property managers, and we said, we want you to come on as a sponsor, but we, what we also want you to do is we want you to nominate a charity that will, that will receive 20% of the profits of our art show. We thought that was a good idea. They also did. Uh, and so to that end, they nominated a charity called Every Step Counts. Uh, I would like to invite Jilly from Every Step Counts up to uh, discuss her end on that. Hi. Um, my name is Jilly Euston from Every Step Counts. It's a walking and running program for individuals who self-identify with challenges with addiction, mental health, depression, social isolation. And uh, that's sort of the framework. Um, but the reason, apart from exercise and good food and positive uh, impact, is that people are encouraged to check their label at the door. and. Uh, it's nice to not have to talk about your addiction if you have one or your mental illness, but also really nice not to talk about your full-time job or your salary or your kids and just come first and foremost as a human being. Uh, when Wolf Sheep invited us to be um, uh, part of their art show, one of the nicest things in terms of their visioning was that they're extending from sort of an art world, which for non-visual artists can seem a little bit intimidating, is it's it's collaborating and, and extending in the sense of community because it's going from art to media to technology to social services and sport. So Every Step Counts is pretty happy to be a part of this. Thank you. Someone wanted to clap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I agree. Um, so what we did is we brought, we brought Jilly in. We literally had her at the show. Well, actually, Jilly was on mat leave at the time. So we brought another representative in, but uh, so they got to be at the show talking to people, literally a part of the community. Um, so once we, we seem to have this model in place of knowing how to communicate with people, how to make them feel like they're aware of what we're doing, that they're part of our world, uh, how we had the charities involved. So we had, a, we had a concept, we had a pretty nice model going on. Uh, what you do at that point is uh, you take that model bigger, you expand. Um, luckily, uh, as was mentioned before we came up, uh, we were invited to be artistic directors for VicFest. Uh, it was the Vancouver Island Culture Festival. Uh, and now I would like to invite Tindy from VicFest up to explain that. Hello. Um, as uh, Adam mentioned, I was on the board of directors for VicFest, which was just held this uh, past June on the beautiful grounds of St. Anne's Academy uh, in the heart of downtown Victoria. So it was a gorgeous back background and easy for folks to get to. Uh, the festival was created with the mandate of featuring and celebrating members of our community and showcasing their talents to other members of our community. Uh, Victoria is a very locally driven city. We love our local businesses, producers, and musicians. So this festival was our chance to kind of highlight that, uh, to highlight the local breweries, the wineries, eateries, artists, and musicians that deserve to be noticed. So basically, we paired musicians who were already recognized um, with people who just needed to be seen, heard, looked at, tasted just once in order to be appreciated. Um, the local support that VicFest involved and generated was enough that a real community was created for the next VicFest, including the folks at Wolf Sheep. So a relationship that both involves and creates a community such as this will only continue to grow. So, um, we're all greater artists than we realize, and I'm not just talking about the people behind me, everybody seated in front of me, we're all greater artists than we realize. Those aren't my words. Nietzsche said that about a hundred years ago, and I think he's most certainly true um, when he said that. 
But what did he mean exactly? We are all greater artists than we realize. I mean, surely we can't all paint the Guernica, we can't all paint the Sistine Chapel, we can't all tinkle the ivories like Glenn Gould, but what we all do is we take in the world that's around us, we filter it, we edit it, we make it into our own movies. And that's a very creative act right there. And as artists, that's something that we all share. Not everybody's aware of that paradigm, but artists can point out those bleeps on, on the cultural radar that we all share. And an early bleep that I had on my radar was uh, every Saturday morning, I used to watch cartoons in my jammies, eating a bowl of cereal. I ate a lot of cereal when I was a kid. And a gag that I saw almost every Saturday, sometimes it was perpetrated by the Muppet Babies, the Shirt Tails, Porky Pig, Wile E. Coyote. They'd be walking, and then they'd realize that they weren't on solid ground anymore. They'd look down, they had walked off a cliff face. For a frozen moment, they'd be standing there suspended. Then reality would come crashing in, and they'd plummet. When I got a bit older, I was reminded of this gag again when I learned about the Greek mythology, the Greek story of um, Icarus and Daedalus. Now, they were banished on the Greek Isle of Crete, which is different, I should point out, than the Greek Isle of Lesbos. That's something totally different. But they were banished, and Daedalus created wings for his son to try to escape this prison. Now, this is significant to the seat of the artist for a couple of reasons, I'll get to that. But while Icarus was flying with these wings, he flew too close to the sun. The sun melted the glue, the feathers. He was frozen for a moment, kind of like Porky Pig. And then he plummeted, dreams dashed into a watery grave. Now, Daedalus, in Greek, doesn't mean art, doesn't mean aviator. It doesn't mean scientist, it means artist. And that's pretty relevant, I think, to survival. And that's something that Wolf Sheep does for the community. We're kind of like, I'm gonna paint a metaphor, I like to talk in metaphors, so bear with me, it's a little bit confused, but basically, we cast our nets for the community into the oceans, teeming with tropical fish we bring it up as food for the community to fulfill the promise of community. Okay, let me just back up for one moment, sorry, to Daedalus and that whole idea of him dreaming these wings. He dreams these wings for his son, kind of like Leonardo da Vinci and his illustrations of helicopters. Now, in a way, what Wolf Sheep does is we create helicopters. We're creating helicopters of the mind, I suppose. Okay, that's not the best metaphor that I've come up with. You don't need to write that in your scribblers. But it's still important, I think, to the seat of the artist. <laughs> but why did Icarus fall? Why did Icarus fall? Now, that's a really important question. And I think maybe Icarus fell because Daedalus was toiling away in a vacuum, creating by himself. I think it's time, though, for really artists to start getting into cahoots together. We need to start cahooting. I'm not sure if that's a word, but if we can add tweet, if we can add fist bump, if these are words that can be added to the dictionary, then maybe we should add cahooting. Cahooting could be a word that we add to the dictionary. Why not? The future exists first in imagination, then in will, then in reality. The future is there for us. If we're, up, if we're willing to grab it, if we're willing to take that leap, and maybe that's something we could all take together. Okay. So what we sort of start to see here is that if you just try to foster even a small spark of creativity within your community, you begin to empower an entire group of people that are rewarded by their own creative actions. We can all collaborate, and we can all create something bigger and grander than anything we can dream. We are Worship Art House. Thank you for your time.
So this is the painting that myself and Liam, Aria, Sarah, Sean, and Josh, and Lori, and Ian all helped create outside today. And we would like to donate the painting to the TEDx organizers. You're free to do with it what you'd like. And I think they even managed to raise a few bucks for the Belfry Theater, and we would not be shy to take more money on their behalf. <laughs> <laughs>